It's that time again. This is Katni with your weekly Python on Hardware News. Every week, we put together the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. It is available through adafruitdaily.com. Head over to sign up and see all of the past and current newsletters, or tune in each week to hear what's going on. This week, Adafruit is going to the movies. John Lewis' Good Trouble is the chronicle of the life of the legendary civil rights activist and Democratic representative from Georgia, including Lewis's 60-plus years of social activism and legislative action on civil rights, voting rights, gun control, health care reform, and immigration. Thousands of protests, 45 arrests, 33 years in Congress. Sometimes change calls for a little trouble. Adafruit is purchasing over 100 on-demand tickets for the team to watch the movie on demand July 3rd, why are we doing this? Magnolia Pictures joined with Adafruit and hundreds of other companies for the Stop Hate for Profit campaign, which means not advertising on Facebook in July. So we're helping to get the word out. Join Adafruit in going to the movies and watch John Lewis' Good Trouble, available beginning July 3rd. The Adafruit Clue Board contains a powerful NRF52840 microcontroller, a suite of sensors, and a color display on a board the size of a BBC microbit. Here's a trio of articles from makers on using the Clue board with CircuitPython. In his Monday microcontroller series, Les takes a look at Clue and provides comparisons to the microbit. He demonstrates how to code the board in both Arduino and CircuitPython. Finally, he provides a review of the microbit add-ons that work with Clue. Check it out at bigl.es. Plus Plus Int posts to Twitter using Bluetooth to talk between a microbit and Clue board in Make Code and CircuitPython, respectively. And finally, Wildest Pixel posts to Twitter using an Adafruit Clue and a Wi-Fi Featherwing, bridged with a Pimeroni pin between, to upload sensor stats to Adafruit I.O. In this week's episode of Python T, host Nina Zakarenko talks with Thea Flowers. Thea has used CircuitPython on a number of projects, including modular synthesizer modules, available at winterbloom.com. Check out the latest episode at twitch.tv slash nnjaio. In this week's CircuitPython Deep Dive livestream, Scott streamed his work with ESP32-S2 bus I.O. and getting ready for the pull request. Check out the latest video and past videos at adafru.it slash deep dive. The Open Source Hardware Association posts a resolution to redefine spy pin names. Oshawa states, The words that we use have an impact. It is time to remove the words which describe a morally repugnant relationship, master and slave, from our technical vocabulary. These terms have been used for decades to describe the relationship between hardware components. Some of the standards and interfaces that use this terminology include SPI, I2C, and more. By way of example, the SPI protocol specifies logic signals with names including master output slave input, master input slave output, and slave select. This is unacceptable. Effective immediately, we call upon hardware and software developers to fully and widely adopt the resolution to redefine spy pin names. While acknowledging that the change has its costs, there is no excuse for any member of our community or industries to continue to reference master and slave as technical terms going forward. We will continue to work on other standards. Read the full post at oshawa.org. Adafruit has been preemptively removing such language for a number of days. It is hoped that the broader community will join in these efforts. This week, we published the second translated guide in the Adafruit Learning System. The CircuitPython Essentials Guide has been translated into Spanish. Thank you to Alvaro for all of his work on the translations. You can find Essenciales para CircuitPython at learn.adafruit.com. This guide joins the first Spanish guide, Bienvenido a CircuitPython. Adafruit hopes to have additional translated guides in the future. The Adafruit subreddit surpassed 3,000 subscribers last week. The CircuitPython subreddit is very close to 1,000 subscribers. Get your CircuitPython information fix via Reddit by becoming a member at reddit.com slash r slash CircuitPython. Tiny Town is a palm-sized light-emitting sculpture which is rechargeable and portable. A CircuitPython controller randomly and continually fades individual RGB LEDs through a range of warm colors. The piece can operate plugged into a USB outlet or untethered for more than five hours per recharge. For more details, check out Extra Sleepy on Instagram. Liz plays a game of Blink a Jump, programmed on an Adafruit Pi badge. For more details, check out Blitz City DIY on Twitter. Robotic Masters post to Twitter, playing with CircuitPython and a RoboHat MM1 to get multiple options out of a single button. Code is available on GitHub. Blinka's Breakout is a CircuitPython implementation of a game similar to Atari Classic Chips Challenge. Details available on hackaday.io. Learn about adding voice to a CircuitPython project using Amazon Poly. 
Display quotes and synthesize speech on an Adafruit Pi portal using CircuitPython and AWS serverless. Slogworks posts to Twitter, dice rolls using an ARM Cortex-M4 Adafruit Feather microcontroller and display, programmed in CircuitPython and installed in a Mint tin. This Raspberry Pi project uses TEA5767 and TPA2016 modules via an I2C bus to create a web browser-controlled radio. Use an Adafruit Pi portal plus a soil sensor and CircuitPython for this IoT project. Sim Stapler Simulator. Simulate the Sim Stapler game with a real stapler and Circuit Playground Express in this write-up on scrust.com. Video available from Stuart Russell on YouTube. This week's episode of Microcontrollers with Kinger North is Controlling DC Motors with Circuit Python and Arduino, available on YouTube. The International Space Station tracker displays the ISS current location and trajectory using a Raspberry Pi, ePaper display, Protostock's enclosure, and Python. Details available on hackster.io. PyCard 2 is a SAMD21 development board that uses Arduino and CircuitPython programming, available on Tindy. Learn about working with files in Python in this extensive tutorial available on realpython.com. Learn three essential steps to follow to increase the impact of your experiments in a growth marketer guide to designing A-B tests using Python on towarddatascience.com. Learn about PySimple GUI, the simple way to create a GUI with Python in this tutorial from realpython.com. The number of CircuitPython-supported microcontrollers and single-board computers continues to grow. There were no new boards added this week. Are you interested in adding a new board to CircuitPython? Check out the Adafruit Learn system for a series of guides about getting your board added to CircuitPython and circuitpython.org. There are four new Python on hardware related guides in the Adafruit Learn system this week, including build an easily customizable LED demonstration or protest sign that can be seen at night using CircuitPython on a Feather M4 with the RGB matrix Feather Wing and any Adafruit RGB LED matrix panel in this guide from John Park. Build your own Apex Legends Pathfinder robot friend with Pi Portal and CircuitPython in this guide from John Park. The number of CircuitPython libraries is 260. This includes both the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries and the CircuitPython community libraries. There are no new libraries this week, but there are a number of updated libraries. As always, visit circuitpython.org libraries to download the latest Adafruit CircuitPython bundle. Included in this week's updates from the CircuitPython team, Brian's been working on a CircuitPython library for the PCF8591 ADC DAC combo sensor from NXP. This is a fairly simple but useful little package. It's 8-bit, which doesn't quite measure up to some of the more high-end ADCs and DACs out there, but it comes with a DAC as well and is relatively inexpensive as well as widely available. Having an ADC and DAC in a small package certainly has a lot of potential, and the QT form factor will make it easy to squeeze into whatever use you find for it. Dan's main project now is implementing underscore BLEIO yet again, for the third time. This time, he's targeting the HCI Bluetooth implementation on ESP32, which is used on our airlift boards. HCI is a standard serial-based command protocol that's used for many Bluetooth-capable coprocessors. After failing to make progress on SDIO support with his crude setup, Jeff ordered a development kit from Microchip with a properly wired SD card slot and existing demo of its use that he could build from source. This board, called SAM-E54 Explained Pro, is based on the SAM-E54 microcontroller, which is very similar to the SAM-D51 that is in so many of Adafruit's boards, but was not yet supported. There is now support for this board in CircuitPython, and this paves the way for other boards based on SAM-E54, and Jeff has also successfully used this board to read SD cards using SDIO from within CircuitPython, so work on that pull request has resulted. Resumed. Melissa has been working on porting the Pi Portal library over to Blinka. This was a fun project because it builds on top of the Display.io library that she had already been working on. Since Linux already has built-in facilities for things like networking, a lot of it involves stripping out things like communicating with the Airlift ESP module. Since things like displays are added into Raspberry Pi and not built in, she needed to add functionality to be able to define a display, so it likely won't be as clean as opening examples written for the Pi Portal without modification. At this point, she has the Bitcoin example running and will be working to make the library more seamless. FlaskCon is a community-driven Flask event being held July 4th and 5th. Flask is a micro-web framework written in Python. Call for Papers is currently open. Visit flaskcon.com for more information. EuroPython 2020 this year will be an online conference from July 23rd to 26th. Attending the conference days will require a ticket, and participating in the sprints will be free. Check out ep2020.europython.eu for details. 
PyCon AU has announced they are holding PyCon Line AU in August. Check out 2020.pycon.org.au for more information. PyCon India 2020 will be held online from October 3rd through 5th, 2020. A call for proposals is now open through the 14th of August. Visit ian.org slash 2020 for details regarding the CFP and the conference. Translating CircuitPython is now easier than ever. Translations make the project more accessible to a broader range of folks. Adding or improving translations is a great way to get started contributing to the project. With the help of fellow open source project Weblate, we're making it even easier. You can create a new account just for Weblate or sign in using other sites like GitHub or Google. If you write another language, visit adafru.it slash translate cp, sign in, and start translating. Looking for more Python on hardware all week? Join the Adafruit community on Discord and check out the help with CircuitPython and CircuitPython channels. We're over 21,000 strong and continuing to grow. You'll find a supportive, positive community filled with like-minded folks. Join at adafru.it slash discord. And that is your Python on hardware news for this week. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter or tune in again next week.